I never knew you were this weird. Really? <laughs> Because you, you kept it, you, we were yeah. working together for a couple of days. And did, I know. You're absolutely mental. <laughs> in, a, in a nice way? Yeah. 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 But the, so. <laughs> I feel sorry for them, right? No, I do. Particularly, particularly fat women, because fat is a feminist issue. Men get fat and we just go, fuck it, all bought and paid for, you know. <laughs> We don't come under the same constraints of society. Whereas women are inundated with images of how you should be. Size zero models, this diet, that diet, look like this, keep your man. And they make such an effort, don't they, fat girls? They've always got lovely hair, aren't they? They're always having their hair. They've always got lovely hair. Always got lovely hair. Always got those lovely false nails, haven't they? They make an effort. Anything but jogging, right? <laughs> they love high heels, don't they? They think it makes their legs look less... It doesn't. It just... <laughs> you can just hear them coming now. <laughs> I don't want any fat people to feel uncomfortable at one of my gigs, so next time, buy two seats. I'm, I'm joking. I'm dead. time joke. Shut up. Our next presenter is the Queen of Pop. Not you, Alton. Sit down. This is... She's all woman. I'll give you some clues. She's always vogue, she's a material girl, and she's just like a virgin. <clears throat> Please welcome Madonna. If I'm still just like a virgin, Ricky, then why don't you come over here and do something about it? I haven't kissed a girl in a few years. On TV. I trended on Twitter that day. I, was, I trended. I wasn't even there. Nothing to do with me. Because people are saying, what would, what would Ricky Gervais have said? What would, what would have happened to Ricky Gervais? Well, nothing, and, and, I, and I said this live, I said, nothing would happen to me because I wouldn't have told a joke about his wife's hair. I'd have told a joke about a boyfriend, and that was the joke. But someone from the press was in, and then that got put in the press, so I trended it again. <laughs> so I try and keep my mouth shut, unless it's work, like a gig. And all these people say, no, no, it's... It, it was, it was joking about... Someone said it was joking about her disability. <laughs> well, I'm going a bit thin, so I'm disabled. I, that means I can park right up next to Tesco's now. And I'm... And I'm fat. That's a, that's a disease. Isn't it? I'm fat and balding. But I am... <laughs> I should get fucking benefit. Everybody, you went to the Achilles heel of everybody. Like when you tell a woman who's, you know, that her, that it's, you know, she looks old. That just hits a woman it's, deep it, in the. What, 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 I think you said something about the Sex in the City women, like about. I said it was airbrushed, and I said, said we hair... now we know how old you are, girls. I saw one of you in a in an episode of Bonanza. No, I was saying, why lie? There's nothing, there's nothing wrong with being 50 or looking 50. But you're not a woman. I don't, yeah, but, but, I, I, get you. I, but get I don't you. think you lose your sexuality at 50. But as I say, I'm going to be nice tonight. I've changed. Not as much as Bruce Jenner, obviously. Now Caitlyn Jenner, of course. What a year she's had. She became a role model for trans people everywhere, showing great bravery in breaking down barriers and destroying stereotypes. She didn't do a lot for women drivers, but... <laughs> Welcome to my show. Uh, it's not a show. There's no dancers or jugglers. It's basically a bloke talking, um, which is essentially what stand-up comedy is, isn't it? A bloke talking. Sexist. Um, <laughs> What about all the funny female comedians? Like, um... <laughs> no, 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 right. No, 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 no. I'm not doing that. OK, right. That was irony, OK? There's going to be a bit of that throughout the show. See if you can spot it, OK? <laughs> now, 
That's when I say something I don't really mean for comic effect. And you as an audience, you laugh at the wrong thing because you know what the right thing is. It's a way of satirising attitudes. Like that first joke, I use the old-fashioned sexist trope that women aren't funny. Now, in real life, I know there are loads of funny women. Like, um... <laughs> I did it again. Well spotted. Good. <laughs> no, but there are. Um, Dame Edna Everidge. She is... <laughs> Uh, Eddie Izzard. <laughs> she's brilliant, isn't she? She's not only a great comedian, she's, she's also a great actress, isn't she? She was brilliant in that thing as that man. <laughs> I was really bad in love till you arrived, yeah. Now I can see in colour why I was great. I saw a documentary back in England about this woman who was 350 pounds because she ate 10 burger and fries a day. That'll do it. <laughs> 10 separate meals of burger and fries, 10 separate trips to McDonald's, right? In a cab. Oh, didn't even walk that. Wasted calories, okay? So, to stop her eating these meals, they wired her jaw together. So she liquidised ten burger and fries a day. Now she's on burger smoothies. Now she's not even chewing. That used up three calories. So, lo and behold, she gets fatter. So, they admitted her to have that thing done where you staple your stomach together. And she's sitting there in hospital, looking all depressed. Well, you can't eat for an hour before an operation, can you? <laughs> Lank hair, smock. Christ knows where they got that, right? <laughs> and she said, it's a really dangerous procedure, but it's the only option left. <laughs> <laughs> One, jogging? <laughs> you don't even walk. Right. Uh, salad? You don't like the taste. Three. Nine burger and fries a day. <laughs> it's a start, isn't it? It's a start to her. Jesus. We have, uh, we have some fat people in Britain. But um, you, like everything else, are, are the gold medalists of that as well. Right? <laughs> You'd win that in the Olympics. I saw this episode of Jerry Springer. It was called Jerry Springer Saves the World's Fattest Man. You've got to watch that. <laughs> so he's there going, OK, let's try and save this guy's life. He's got a heart of gold as well. He's like me, right? So, <laughs> so it cut to this guy at home in his house. They couldn't bring him to the studio. They had a camera crew there. And I say house. He was in a trailer, obviously. And um, <laughs> he was. He was. He was like a big blob on the bed. He sort of filled the trailer. He looked like an un uncooked souffle. <laughs> and it was, you could just see like, his eyes in this doughy mess. And uh, he was going, uh, I don't want to die, Jerry. I don't want to die. And I felt sorry for him. I got over that. But, and I said, how much do you weigh? And he, and he weighed, a thousand pounds. A thousand pounds. Now, my point is this. When he weighed himself one day and he was, say, 500 pounds, <laughs> didn't he think then that was a lot? <laughs> didn't he go, that's a lot? <laughs> For a human? <laughs> For what is essentially a land mammal? <laughs> that's a lot. I'll only have eight breakfasts today.